Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mullen. In this video I'm going to go over how to use Excel uh, when taking a set of data and trying to come up with a mathematical model. And I'm also going to show you some advanced uh, graphing techniques. So the first off uh, I have on to Excel, I've made two columns. I'm making sure to make my independent variable be the first column. Uh, I have the age of a baby in months and its weight. So I'm going to go ahead and click on insert. We're going to go ahead and go over to charts and we're going to insert a scatter chart. Uh, and I'm going to click on one without any lines or connected lines. So here's our uh, chart title. And we could go and title that and I'll show you a completed example in a second. Um, once I have my data, I can see my points on there. I'm going to want to click on the data point and right click on it and go to add trend line. And when I click on add trend line, it's going to bring up uh, this this thing over here. Now, if you lose this if you lose this column over here, you can go back to this drop down and click on the series one trend line, and it will bring you back to this. Uh, and so, what I want you to do is I want you to ignore exponential, ignore logarithmic, and ignore moving average. We're going to be primarily dealing with linear, polynomial, and the power function. Um, for the types of relationships we're going to be looking at. So I look at this graph here and I, I see it's linear. Um, I'm also going to go down and click on display equation on chart and it's going to pop up an equation on there. And then I'm also going to click on display R squared value on chart and that's going to be that correlation coefficient. The closer that number R squared is to 1, the better the model that you've chosen fits the data. Okay. So, in this case, 0.97, pretty good. I'm going to look at the other ones. Polynomial, 0.97. Also, power, 0.93. Not quite as good. So, I'm going to go back to linear. Um, this, to me, looks like a linear. If it's truly linear, um, we have, uh, once we have our linear on there, we notice that y equals mx plus b is our form. It really does look quite linear, uh, and so what I can do is I can go back to my um, notes here, and let's take a look at this. So here is weight versus age of a newborn baby. I've gone ahead and copied and pasted in that, that data table into um, my notes here. Uh, I want to also point out that Excel will not extend your line of best fit or your trend line as far as it should. So your trend line, really, if you had a ruler on a piece of paper, you would see that trend line extend all the way uh, to the to the vertical inter vertical axis, and you see it extend beyond. Uh, it just only shows the data that you have. And the reason why I bring that up is is looking at my equation, I actually see this vertical intercept listed, even though the trend line shown does not have where that line crosses the vertical intercept, but it really is there. If that trend line were to continue, it would intercept the vertical axis right at 7.9. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to talk about slope and uh, vertical intercepts. So when I look at my equation here, uh, y is equal to 1.9x plus 7.9, uh, we're going to go ahead and make an equation out of this. y stood for the variable of weight. So we're going to replace y with the variable that uh, y represented, and that was weight. I'm going to go ahead and put my 1.9 in here. I'm going to leave a space for some units. I'm going to write in here what x was equal to. x stood for my age. So we're just replacing those there. And then it says plus 7.9. And I'm going to leave some space for some units there. Now every time you write an equation and you, and you transfer it to a physics equation, you need to replace the variables and you also need to add units to the numbers. Now with a line, uh, a linear relationship, the units for the slope should be very easy. Remember that in the most basic sense, a slope is just simply the rise over the run. Because the rise and the run are not just numbers, they actually have a physical meaning the rise has to include the unit of the rise, and it also has to use the unit of the run. Okay. So what this means is when I look at my rise over my run, I'm going to look at my units, and I see that 
my units of my rise is pounds and the units of my months uh, units of my run is months when I plug in and calculate and if I did this by hand all my units on top would have pounds in them all my units on bottom would have months in them and so what this means is those units because they don't cancel are going to be left stuck to that number so 1.9 pounds over months okay or pounds per month so when I look at this number here um, my slope actually has some units on there and I'm going to look at my vertical intercept where that trend line crossed the vertical axes and that was right about here at 7.9 and when I say 7.9, 7.9 what? Well, just look at the unit on there. Okay, so vertical intercept was 7.9 pounds. Would be my unit on uh, my vertical intercept. All numbers have units when writing a physics equation. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and take my physics equation, and I would like you to notice how I'm going to give it some physical meaning. Okay. So, the two important aspects of this graph that we're going to get physical meaning is the slope and the vertical intercept. So, what does the slope mean? If I look at this a different way, 1.9 pounds, any number divided would give me a number over 1. Okay, So, I can always think of any number as being over 1, 1 1.9 over 1. The unit of month is still in the denominator. So if I rewrite my slope in a little different way, I get 1.9 pounds and then um, one month on the bottom. And so the meaning of this slope, we're going to make what's called a for each statement. For each, and each is how many things? One. So for each unit in the denominator, for each one month, uh, for each one, I'll say additional month, The baby grows. He or she gains how many pounds? 1.9 pounds. So for an additional month, uh, the baby grows. Okay, he or she gains 1.9 pounds. The reason why I say for each additional one month the baby grows, he or she gains 1.9 pounds is because the baby keeps growing. I can't just say for each month the baby weighs 1.9 pounds because the baby is actually continuously growing. So I have to make that um, description of the slope procedural or continual. So it's talking about the change for each additional month added to the baby's life or a change in one month corresponds to a change in 1.9 pounds and it's an increase. Okay? So you, you're, uh, this is called a for each statement and we use that to describe the meaning of the slope. We can also describe the meaning of the vertical intercept. So I look at the vertical intercept, it is 7.9 pounds. Okay, that's where it crossed right here. My b value in my y equals 7 uh, y equals mx plus b was 7.9 pounds. That was my b. Here's y equals mx plus b. There it is. So when I look at my vertical intercept, 7.9 pounds, remember that that always corresponds to when the x-axis is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a physical meaning. 7.9 pounds, look at the age uh, and months of 0, what does this mean about my baby? Well, it means that when the baby was zero months old, okay, it weighed 7.9 pounds. Okay. So all you need to do is say when the, basically, uh, the age of the baby was zero. So age, when the y, excuse me, when the x variable is zero, when the age of the baby is zero months, Uh, what happens when the age of the baby is zero months? That means that the baby weighs nine pounds. Seven point nine pounds. 
So what this means is this y-intercept is actually, uh, it actually means something. It means something about our, 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 our situation, in this case, the baby.